So I was making music for our festival opening show recently and a client wanted me to make a sound that moved from back to front. But I only had a stereo setup. Thank God for VCV Rack. So we all know that depth on a stereo system is created with reverb. The more reverb you add, the further a sound moves back. Filtering out higher frequencies also helps. And of course, a volume reduction as well. But in this case, I was working inside Cubase or Nuendo, and I already had a great sound with Serum. So I needed something that would start out distant and quickly get closer. I could have just used automation, but as I was expecting some revisions and I was on a tight deadline, I wanted to find something quicker. Luckily, VCV Rack has entered the chat. With VCV's audio effect plugin, I can basically create any effect I want. And since I wanted all the controls I could get, I opted for Shape Master as an envelope. I tried a bunch of reverbs, but I ended up with VCV's sound stage module. The cool thing about this module is that it's exactly what I need, a room simulator. We can hook up four inputs and four outputs. So I'll take the output of the audio module, so the DAW output, and send that to input one and send output right to input two. So now we basically got two speakers. If I connect the destinations, A to the left input and B to the right, now these are like the microphones. So you've got a speaker and a microphone. You can play around with the speaker position. In comparison to the microphones. So the further away the speaker sits from the microphone, the duller, quieter and more reverberant the sound. We can adjust the room width and length, even the height. So what I want to do now is move the source, the speaker, from back to front. Luckily we've got two CV inputs for that, so we've got a CV input for the X uh, coordinate and the Y coordinate. So if we combine that with Shape Master, as you can see I've already created a shape here. So the output of channel 1 on Shape Master is going to both Y inputs. If we disconnect the X inputs for a second, let's have a listen. Now the sound moves from back to front. And I'm using Shape Master Pro here. So I've got Clock Sync activated. And I've got a MIDI to CV module. So I'm using the main clock output from the DAW and I'm connecting that to the clocked uh, BPM input. Uh, I'm using the clock divider output set to uh, whole notes which is resetting the clocked module. And that means it starts in sync with the notes. And yeah, I've changed the pulses per quarter note to 48. So the clock is going to the clock input. And I'm taking the reset output from clocked and sending that to the reset input. I was using the clocked module in this case because it was a bit more stable than the MIDI to CV module. But other than that, uh, I also made a dry wet control. So I'm using the fade module and I'm taking the direct output from the DAW, sending that to input two. So on the right, we get the dry input and on the left, we get the wet input. And since I have two, I've mapped this to a patch master and I labeled it as mix control. So I can easily automate this in my DAW. So dry and wet. Uh, I've also mapped uh, the rate control because I'm actually using two shapes. One is going to the Y input and the other was going to the X input. 
So if we take the channel 2 output and send that to the X input, you can see that it now moves from right to left. But that's not what I want. I want it to move from the outside to the center. So that's why I'm using an inverter module right here. So this will invert uh, the voltage. So now it moves from out to in. And as you can hear, now the pitch will dive a little bit. And that's because this module has a built-in Doppler effect. So that's a fun future. Uh, one thing I am missing, and that's probably because it takes up a lot of CPU, but I like the sound if you change the width or the length of the room. But unfortunately, we don't have a CV input for that, but we can hack our way around it by uh, using the UMAP module from Sturmelder. So if I map uh, the width, for example, and now I can just, I don't know, add a, a new shape. That looks really cool, actually. Okay, cool. So we're getting some artifacts. I'm just gonna copy channel 2 and paste. I may need to play around with the curve. Maybe I need to invert it. Okay, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm gonna change the amount. Uh, let's change the range. Yeah, I could also play around with the length, of course. Maybe I need to make it two bars. Depends if you want to keep the artifacts or hide them in the gap when the note isn't playing. In this case, I'm resetting every bar, so that doesn't work. I'd have to use a clock divider to fix that. Uh, reset, uh, divide by two. I like this little <laughs> whoop at the end. Let's play around with the reflections. You can actually turn up the reflections to a hundred and this will freeze the reverb. So, a cool effect. Uh, you can play around it with the uh, diffusion. And it's probably more useful with uh, uh, transient material, but yeah. Since this is an effect, I can just save a preset and I can just, uh, I don't know, open up some uh, drum loops or whatever. Okay, so VCV, rack effects, a recent sound stage. Okay, let's see how that sounds. Let me pause the uh, shape number three so we can hear what's going on. Let's offset this a bit. So diffusion is like smearing the transients a little bit. Now it does sound a bit flanchy. And it's a lot less with a higher diffusion. But of course it also depends on your microphone positions. Okay, uh, another thing we can do, and that's a trick from the manual actually, if you take an output and send it back to another input, so let's take output A, 
and send that to input tree, we can create feedback loops. So let me add uh, a mixer. So this is left and right. And let's take destination C and D. And uh, let's reconnect that. So this one and this one. Okay, so now we've got two additional microphones. Uh, let me just take another sound as an example. Okay, now let's, ooh, let's turn up the input. Now we've got two feedbacking inputs and we've got two microphone setups. One in the middle, one in the back. Okay, now let's automate the width again. Remember, this is just a kick drum. Pretty sick. You can even go further and create change of feedback. So output A goes into input 3 and we take the output of uh, destination C for example and we send that to input 4. Let's see what happens. Weird. If you set the reflections high enough and the input levels, you don't even need an input. That's uh, pretty cool, actually. If we change the rate. You get the point. Well, I thought that was pretty cool. Ever since I've got the VCV Rack Pro version, I'm using it more and more to solve these creative mixing issues. Because you can create any effect imaginable this way. 
Let me know if you have any questions. Head over to octoproductions.com slash patches to download this patch and to get a copy of my free modular getting started guide. And I'll see you next week with another tutorial. Oh, 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 o